previously on Talk That Talk. Um, and and the ideas and the thought process of Kyler. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so here's your here's the first question, and, and Maya, you, obviously we're gonna go back and forth. But why did you choose an HBCU? Um, to be honest with you, I chose PV before I put PV in the realm of HBCUs. So I knew about PV before I knew about quote unquote HBCUs. So I chose PV because I wanted to dance. So my answer is a little bit different. Now, I'm glad I chose where I went. Um, But like I said, it wasn't that I sought after HBCUs because I wasn't really as aware as I could have been. Um, Neither my mother or my father went to an HBC. So, you know, it's, it's not like that was something that was passed down. So I frankly just chose because I want to be out there on the 50 dancing. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Walter's Walter's podcast, uh, brother Walter, his name is, his podcast is two cent, two cent. You call it. <laughs> two cent, you call it. I don't know. that. I, I don't know. Oh, it seems like a bunch of liquor. God dang. This is what happens when you got a lot of hair. Anyway, seems like some liquor. Uh, but yeah, two, two cent. You call it. That's that's Walter's podcast. Um, why I chose HBC real talk. I honestly didn't know like anything else. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not even like, you know, I was just completely oblivious to predominantly white institutions and things like that because my mother, uh, she did go to U of H. She did get, uh, I think it was her master's degree from U of H or another undergraduate degree, degree from U of H, but she also went to ULM. Uh, so I honestly, knew about predominantly white institutions but in the realm of like the spectrum of like college life and band and stuff like that i i I really didn't know anything about a predominantly white only thing i knew was which hbcus um it was interesting going through my garage today or not today but monday and tuesday because i had the chance and I, i typically do this maybe about once every two years i had the chance to pull out some of my um my applications and and um scholarship letters and it was interesting to see the number of hbcus that i did apply to but then i'm when now that i'm older i I always i'm looking back now and i'm like why why just an hbcu Mm. um so i i I really just did not and and was completely unaware of what predominantly white institution bands were and the the truth of the matter is you don't ever really see them come to your school to recruit you See, that's a good point, because I was just about to try and figure out if I can put myself back where I was when I was in school. And the only really, quote unquote, recruitment that I knew of was band related. It was everybody that was come back, coming back that went to Townview that was coming back from their respective schools. And that is just what we knew as, quote unquote, recruitment. Of course, a lot of people went to PV. We had people that came back. Um, from Gramlin, from uh, Langston, maybe. I'm not really sure. But in and of itself, those are still HBCUs. So I don't know. I guess I was just kind of surrounded by it. But that's really, really true. I don't know how many HBCUs, and maybe it's better in today's time, but I, not that I can think of, but also maybe it has to do with the school that I went to in general, that I went to a magnet school, that not a lot of HBCUs were reaching out or going that route, per se. So I'm not exactly sure, but I mean, my dad went to Gremlin. Um, my sister went to University of Houston. So, I mean, it's like I was aware, but I was like, girl, please. One, I was 17 going to school, right? So I I wasn't able to go far to begin with because my mom was like, no, we're not doing that out of state stuff. But um, I'm too young. But two, it was really more just like, I want to be a fox. So that's what, exactly where I'm going. Yeah, you were determined just to be a fox. I mean, it, which is fair. Um, you know, I, like I said, for me as a band person, as a trumpet player, as a screamer, when I was in college, I mean, not college, when I was in high school, I only looked up Real Talk, Screaming Demons, and Trump Funk. That's all I knew. And I always wanted to actually be Trump Funk. I wanted to go to Jackson State and be mm-hmm. Trump Funk. Um, but when the opportunity came for me to do it, um my the story really goes my boys 
that I my crab brothers that I came with in high school with, they were gonna go to Jackson originally, and I was gonna go with them. Mm -hmm. uh, but then randomly at the last minute, they made a decision that they were gonna go to Southern, so they ended up going to Southern. Uh, and I was like, eh, I don't want to go to Southern. I'm good, you know. Um, and really, I just didn't want to go where other people who had come from my school had gone. Uh, the typical places. So most of them were either going to Texas Southern, Southern or Prairie View. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want to go there. Sure. Um, so, yeah, but but on average, predominantly white institutions, unless it's a college fair, don't come to schools to recruit like you don't physically see band directors walking into band room mm -hmm. to recruit students. So I think that is the other reason that you that you know, I specifically chose HBCU and why I didn't or was not aware of predominantly white institutions because you don't see them. Sure. So I guess for me, I guess my question would be, why is it that you do see, don't see uh, those, you know, band directors and things or, or, or recruiters from predominantly white institutions walking into band room, walking into dance room classes, walking into auxiliary, you know, classes and, and, and coming into those those spaces and actually recruiting? Um, honestly, I, I think that it, I can only speak from my frame of reference, of course. And I would like to say that possibly there's potential depending on what schools you're going to, right? So maybe had I went to, I don't even know what would have been quote unquote a predominantly white or a white school within Dallas. I went to Townview. It was very much, it's a magnet school, but when you think about um, the demographics of it all, there were a lot of black people that went there and the band in and of itself was pretty, I mean, you know, pretty, you know, anyways. Yeah. So I think that maybe that has something to do with it because when I think about it now, like Dr. Zachary, right? He's very, very big on recruitment and has made it something to where he goes back and they do these tours, right? To be able to to give that type of exposure or recruitment. I don't know what the quote unquote white schools may be around town, but possibly schools like, I don't know, USC or whom, whomever, Ohio State, maybe they're going to those types of schools. Maybe they're going to the Mansfield schools and the Plano schools or whom have you but I wasn't there, so I'm not exactly sure. So that would only be my thought process is that I think it just maybe comes down to where you're going to school. Because why would technically an Ohio State come to Little Old Town View or go to SOC or something like that? So I'll say this, you know, uh, I just worked recently for one of the top uh, programs in the state of Texas mm -hmm. um, out in Duncanville. And they didn't come there either, but those kids go there. Mm. You know, those kids participate and those kids, those kids go to UNT and they go to uh, Sam Houston and they go to SMU. Like they go to these places, but they don't, they don't come in, you know, into the band room and, you know, they don't have this huge announcement band director from UNT is going to be here. So y'all make sure y'all try like it, it, it just didn't happen at all, but they, but they go to those schools. Um, and I think, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's a sense of like, we know they're going to come anyway. Yeah, that's what, that was going to be my next point. Do they, they probably feel like they don't have to. Why waste the time and money? My school and the, our name that we've made for ourselves is what it is. So if people want to come, they're going to come regardless. The numbers are not going to waver based off of did I make sure that I went to the northeastern region, the northwestern region, the southern region, what have you. We are Ohio State. We are little whoever. The folks gonna come, so that's that's bullet number two. So is that a fair approach to take with HBCUs? Why why is it that HBCUs can't take that approach? I think it depends on which HBCU you talking about, my friend. <laughs> I, I think uh, so. You think that if you really want to get into it, I think it depends on which HBCU we talking about. So you're basically saying, in a nutshell. If and I'm just going to spitball some out here. Obviously, you know, I'm going to name Southern mm -hmm. If Southern Jackson. I'll throw Alcorn in the group mm -hmm. and I'll even and 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 
I'll be fair. I'll even throw PV in the group. And the only reason I'm throwing PV in the group is because we've seen the numbers grow at Prairie View.